the almighty Nargakuga Glaive, our savior of base rise, returns in Sunbreak with Lucid Nargakuga. But is it just as good as the original from back in the old days? Welcome back Hunters, I know you have all been curious about the Narga Glaive, specifically the Lucid Narga which does bring the attack power up to par. So this Glaive is kind of making a return, but it's not back as you may have expected or were hoping for. So in this video I'll examine the Glaive and make some comparisons to others to explain why it could potentially still be a meta weapon, however it will take a proper build to make it viable, and why it still might not beat out other element Glaives. After that, we'll discuss the potential builds on how to make this glaive viable. It does offer some interesting playstyles, but again, compared to Element Glaives, I don't think Narga stands on top of the mountain any longer. So jumping right in, let's take a look at the glaive itself. The most prominent and best selling part of the glaive is the upgraded raw attack and jewel slots. 340 raw is definitely good raw damage, it matches the Valstrax glaive and is just a bit lower than the final boss weapon. With augments as well, you can bring the damage up to 350 attack raw damage. Most glaives that beat 340 have negative affinity or no purple sharpness, Ibushi being the exception. The decorations are amazing though with a 4 slot and a 2 slot which makes it better than the final boss glaive and the Ibushi glaive. Sharpness is lacking quite a bit, it's even less than the original Narga glaive, but it can be upgraded compared to the original, which is a selling point. It has very little poison, so utilizing this as a status weapon isn't the most ideal. The Camellius Glaive is still a much better option with very similar amounts of purple sharpness, but triple the poison value. So a little less raw, but it still has good deco, so overall if you're looking for a foray build, the Vile Caster is still a much better option. In terms of element, most element glaives don't match the raw damage of the Lucid Narga Blade either. However, compared to base rise, we now have more gear with many more jewel slots, we have more jewels available, and we have choreo crafting to get max damage with critical element and still maintain raw damage skills. Now I won't go into too huge details about the calculations, but when you're considering raw versus element, there are quite a few factors involved including the skills you have. So you really have to compare damage set to set. It's not as simple as saying, is this glaive better than that one? A good assumption in Sunbreak is most element glaives start with a raw 320 and elements close to either 20, 30, or 50. After that, you'll have to consider each build, when do the skills activate, and the realistic nature of actually hitting your attacks when the skills are active. The first Lucent set I provide in this video is a Grinder S set. Now I'll go into more details in the sets portion of this video, but essentially Grinder S actually raises your raw purple sharpness multiplier from 1.39 to 1.53. It lasts for 90 seconds and that's a huge change if utilized appropriately. When I compared this to Element Glaives, if I could land my hits at the right moments and utilize the Grinder S skill properly, damage from the Lucent Glaive goes way up, even higher than Element Glaives with 50 element hitting a element hit zone of 25 on a monster. That's crazy damage, but again it's only for a limited period of time and then you have a much longer downtime until Grinder S activates again. So overall for consistency, an element glaive with 45 element on a build with critical element maxed out, on a monster with hit zones 25 or above, is still way more worth than Lucent with or without Grinder S. However, when you compare Lucent to typical low element glaives, on monsters with even high hit zones of 20 to 25, Lucent might still beat it out depending on your efficiency as a hunter to be able to hit weak zones consistently and attack when your skills are active. Monsters with weak element hit zones below 20, Narga definitely still shines and it's a great glaive to run. So it's definitely a little bit more complex to make a direct comparison and say which one is better than the other. As I noted earlier, for consistency, 45 plus element on good hit zones is always better. For mid elements, it'll depend from monster to monster and your skill to be able to hit those good hit zones consistently. So where that leaves the Lucent Glaive is that it's still going to be really good for a variety of monsters, but any monster with extremely weak hit zones to element, elements are going to be the definite way to go. So in my opinion, you have two options that you can take. Number one, you lean into that high raw damage and boost sharpness. Or number two, you break the sharpness and boost attack with the new Grinder S skill. So let's talk about the Grinder S set first since I've really been curious about this skill. Grinder S is a skill which boosts your sharpness damage multiplier 
for a certain period of time after sharpening up a certain amount of levels. With max of this skill, you need to sharpen up 2 levels to get that extra damage for 90 seconds. What this means in Master Rank is that you basically need a weapon which goes from purple to blue as fast as possible, and then you sharpen back up to purple to get that extra damage. With the Lucent Glaive, you actually have so little white sharpness that this skill becomes pretty viable and a fun playstyle. So the build I have here is based around using the Lucent Glaive with no sharpness modifiers and max grinder S with 2 points of protective polish. So in action, what this looks like is that you start a hunt and quickly lose that purple sharpness down to blue. I have 3 grinder jewels so you can sharpen really quickly in one animation to get back to purple. After sharpening, you have 90 seconds to damage with the boosted purple sharpness. On top of that, the protective polish kicks in and lasts 60 seconds. Now I have purposely done 60 seconds at level 2 because my aim is for you to start using up that little purple sharpness on the blade in those last 30 seconds of boosted grinder S. So by the time grinder S does wear off, you are already hitting that white and blue and then you can sharpen immediately to get your extra damage back. So it's actually kind of fun to use, it's definitely different, it's not the original comfy Narga experience we all had in base Rise. But you know, it's Sunbreak, it's 2022, we want something different and a variety of different playstyles with the Glaive, in my opinion, is a great way to enjoy the game. So a super important note here, you do need to roll the Chagra Greaves and roll the Razor Sharp skill off the Greaves. This skill will slow you down from reaching blue sharpness, so I took it off on the first roll that I got. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. A single jewel slot and a wirebug whisper, which does help the Umtzeg Glaive, so overall it wasn't too bad for this build. So that's the main part of this build. A couple of extra notes here. My talisman is a Wex 2 with a 4 slot deco. Even a 2 slot would be fine. You really don't need the 4 slot. Affinity does reach 100% when Bloodlust and Agitator are active. Weakness Exploit gives you 50% affinity on weak zones, then you get 15% from the critical eye on the helmet, and 20% comes from Bloodlust. For those of you new, Bloodlust poisons you at the start of a hunt and you have to cleanse yourself by attacking the monster. With enough hits, you clear the Magala virus and your affinity is boosted by 20% for 1 minute, after which you repeat the cycle. The final 15% of affinity comes from Max Agitator when the monster is enraged. So clearly with that, we do have max agitator for extra attack as well. I love agitator even though it's not mathematically speaking the most ideal against afflicted monsters, but it's also not a big loss that running it makes you useless. If you don't want agitator, I would recommend changing the gloves out and replacing the agitator jewels with attack. Aim to get as much attack as you can to replace the incoming damage. You will also lose 15% of affinity without agitator, so you will need 3 more levels of critical eye to make up for that as well. For this build particularly, I would recommend the Shogun Senator Gloves, 2 Critical Eye with a built-in Grinder S, so you can replace one of the other Grinder S jewels on this build, and that gives you space to add more attack jewels or comfy jewels. Next up, I have level 4 Resentment. Now because of Bloodlust on the legs, you will go through periods of red recoverable health, so during those times, Resentment gets you some extra bonus damage. I pick this over attack boost simply because I don't have enough slots for attack boost 4, but if you can roll two attack boosts on the armor pieces, then I would replace the two extra resentment jewels with two more attack bringing you up to level 4. It's quite a stretch and it will take a lot of grinding to achieve, so for myself I just went with resentment since I haven't got those attack rolls yet. For speed sharpening skill, I rolled one on the coils, so just be aware if you don't have that roll on the coils, you will need to add one more grinder jewel to the helmet. Make sure you have max speed sharpening, this build really depends on max grinder. Finally, like most current builds, we have chain crit from the chest giving us an extra 10 points of raw attack. And from the coils, we have the skill Mail of Hellfire, which boosts raw damage when you are on the red scroll. For the Lucent Glaive, all we really want is raw damage, so you'll have to keep your main damage skills on the red scroll. So that's pretty much it for this build guys, the second option is basically pushing attack and handicraft instead. Now choreo crafting does make it easier for us to fit some extra sharpness skills into our builds. Without those extra sharpness skills, this loosened glaive wouldn't be quite worth in this build. So the build I'm showing you here is quite honestly unfinished. I think I can get better rolls on the waist and chest but those are two rarity 10 armor pieces and it took me a very long time to grind those out and I ran out of parts. But overall, what I'm really missing is just some extra attack boost, so I figured I'd be able to show you guys and give you guys the template. 
So some of you may roll skills on different armors than what I got here, and that still works. This is the beauty of this new system. Nobody has a one single right way to make a set anymore. So in this build, I utilize the Aurora Canth Helm, Archfiend Chest, Luna Gloves, Sinister Coils, and the Shagura Greaves. I have rolled quite a few skills, so I'll mention them as I break down the skills. The goal with this build is to maintain purple sharpness throughout your damage phases, so the augments on the weapon include a sharpness and an attack boost. The talisman for the build is the same as the previous one, a Wex 2 with a 4 slot deco. Most notably from this build, I have 3 handicraft on the build. This honestly makes the glaive very comfy and you won't lose purple sharpness often. I rolled 1 handicraft on the Luna Gloves here so my choreo crafting graced me with one. If you don't have that, just remove 1 attack boost and add another handicraft. So all this extra sharpness is indeed enough to keep the loosened glaive in purple. In terms of affinity, we do reach 90%, not 100% like the previous build because we dropped 2 levels of critical eye. But between Weakness Exploit, Agitator, and Bloodlust, just like the previous build, we gain a lot of affinity. So because of this, I kept Master Touch on the build. I also rolled a Master Touch on the Shagra legs, which was extremely helpful. So again, you guys can see this will take a lot of crafting, and your skills might not end up on the same armor pieces. Critical Boost is maxed with Jewels, and Weakness Exploit is maxed on the armor and charm. On my Aurora Canth Helms, I actually rolled a single Critical Eye, which is very nice to add for affinity. Just like the previous build as well, Mail of Hellfire is on the coils. That gives you boost of damage on the red scroll, so your damage skills should be on the red scroll. After that, for the final extra damage, we do have again Chain Crit, we have Coalescence, and we have as many attack jewels as you can basically fit in. I was able to fit in 6 attack jewels, but that's also because of my rolls that I got on the armor. There is one other way you can build this set if you want to utilize less handicraft jewels using the Lucent Narga Helm and Chest and adding the Gold Raytheon Gloves, this gives you Handicraft on the helmet, so you really only need two more jewels. Master Touch can also be added, but again, if you don't have the Master Touch Augment on the legs, you can also just add two Razor Sharp Jewels instead to this build and ignore Master Touch altogether. The gloves also maintain Chain Crit just like the Archfiend Chest in the previous build, so that maintains your extra attack. Now on my build here again I haven't rolled for all the changed armor pieces so again this is an incomplete build but essentially what you're looking for is really to get more of those jewel slot skills onto the armor so that you can add more attack jewels or comfy jewels to your build. On this one I did roll the chest piece and I got a critical boost so thanks to the extra critical boost there. The chest and gloves max it out for me on the armor itself and I could add more attack jewels to the jewel slots. With a few more rolls to the head and the gloves, I should be able to add some comfier skills like Power Prologue or Constitution. Those will definitely help bring this build and this glaive to a very viable position. Alright, whew, that was a lot. That's it for the Narga Glaive guys. It definitely isn't as comfy and simple to use as Narga was in Base Rise. And Capcom probably did that on purpose. But as you can see, it is definitely a viable option after a bunch of work. The Grinder S build in my opinion is really fun. It keeps me on my toes and pushes me to output more damage during those 90 seconds. Essentially, it's making me want to be a better hunter and be more efficient with my hunts. So that's my opinion of the Loose Glaive and build recommendations. Let me know in the comments below if you guys give it a shot or if you guys are trying something different with the Glaive. I'm 100% sure there are other builds that you guys might be utilizing, so I'm excited to hear from you. Although hopefully you guys aren't no life in the game like I did this weekend. This grind is very real. So I hope you guys enjoyed this set, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.